Hello, this is Tolfman Trot for Production with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you how you can add fur or fluff to any bottle in Blender by using the Fluffy Maker add on. I apologize if my voice sounds different. Once again, it's just the weather and fighting against all the cold and stuff like that. So if I sound different, that's the reason why. But back to the tutorial. Now, it's an add on uh, that you can use, but it's just a uh, straightforward add-on that can do a lot of things. It's not free, it's just $6, but that's not too bad. And I'll leave a link of it below the video. Download yourselves and check it out. And remember the uh, installation process for it is just the same. Go to Edit, Preferences, Install, uh, Navigate to where you've downloaded the zip file. Click on Install Add-on. Let me type in Fluffy here, F-L-U-F-F. -F -F. There it is and put check in the box and it's activated. Now with this add-on, it only works in Blender 4.2. Uh, That's what it says on Blender Market. But I'm using 4.1 and have no issues with it, so it still works fine. And the good thing about this add-on is one, it doesn't, it's not dependent on the polygon count of your model. Um, so if you have a polygon or a model that's got like 100,000 polygons or a model that has four this the cube has six so six faces it doesn't affect the look of the end result at all and the second thing is is that it works in uh uv unwrapped models and models that aren't uv unwrapped this is not a cube that's been unwrapped at all just a regular cube with nothing done to it and it runs out in cycles and, and in ev but it looks better in cycles now, this, this is the way the add-on looks when you open it up in Blender. It only has four presets. It has It's like it's got categories up here, and you I think you would click on one category, you click on the thumbnail at the bottom. You see all of these uh, presets. You'd assume that if you click on the next one, you click on that again, the presets would be different, but they're all the same. So whatever is up here, click on the main thumbnail, and it's all down here, which is kind of strange, but that's just how the developer made it. So we're going to see how it works on this cube here. Once again, it's not dependent on the UVs or are dependent on the uh, polygon count. And we're going to, let's stick with this for a preset. <coughs> Excuse me. And click on the apply preset. Let's give it a few minutes, a few seconds, hopefully. Uh, it renders out quite okay in terms of speed. But yeah, it's applied that fur texture to it. Now, if you want to see how it looks according to how it looks in the thumbnail, let's click on the, let's change the view, per, uh, uh, view actually. Let's click on this icon here. Give it a few minutes. And there you go. And if you want to remove uh, the fur, just click on this button, remove fur, and it does it. Let's click on another pattern here. Let's cl click on Zebra and click on Apply Preset. So you can get a better visualization, visual, visualization of how the uh, fur lays out when it comes to this pattern. And look at that, a zebra pattern, which is cool. Now, all your uh, parameters or options are here at the bottom. I'm not going to go through all of them because, uh, one, some of them apply to UV unwrapping your model. And this is not UV unwrapped, so we don't need to worry about that at all. But we have an option to apply an image. Now, if you click in this space, it only has one image, uh, which is a viewer node, which I'm assuming is this. And to apply a different texture to the fur, you've got to go to this side of Blender, where we have all the uh, icons here, and click on the material icon, press plus, and it'll give us another option there. Let's, let's convert this back to just a plain 3D view. Click on that. And we're going to make this slot a texture slot. So click on New. Let's give it a few minutes again. Okay, there we go. And let's left click and drag to the divider window. Hold down your uh, left mouse button over this corner and just drag it across. That splits up Blender's viewport. And we're gonna click on this icon up here and click on Shader Editor. Now with this, uh, the notes that up here, we need a few more nodes. So I'm gonna click on this particular node and press Control T to activate the uh, node wrangler. And if this isn't already act activated for you in Blender. All I have to go do is go to Edit, Preferences. Let me close that out. Type in Node. 
and put a check in the box and it activates the node wrangler which gives us these set of nodes to use and we're going to click on first thing we're going to do is turn it from uv to generated because this is not uv unwrapped it's only generated material left click and drag from generated to vector and we're click on open and i'm going to navigate to where i've saved textures on my computer let me click on that one or that uh, option there i'm going to scroll down let's click on let's choose something that kind of stands out a little bit scroll down let me see oh, this one looks good let's click on that and click on open image and then it's pretty much set to apply that texture to our fur so we're going to kind of we're going to pretty much minimize this or close that out by hovering over this part of uh, the window this the uh, divider here right click from the pop-up menu click on pick, click on join areas left click and point your arrow toward the right and that, that eliminates that window. Now if we click in here, we have that uh, texture that we just imported into Blender. Left click on that. And with our cube still selected, click on Apply Texture. And give it a few minutes. And let's change our viewport view. You can see the texture applied to Look at that. It's applied that texture that we just imported into Blender into the fur. Which is excellent. It this uh, add-on it just makes uh, fur creation, <coughs> excuse me again, fur creation very very simple and very very easy, and there's no hassle with it. You can uh, adjust the way your texture or your um, fur looks by scrolling down, change the radius of it, the shape, uh, minimum and maximum factors, um, interpolated hair curves, and this has to do with the. UV map, but ours isn't UV unwrapped, so this is not going to be something we look into. If we scroll down further, we have more options with the density, the density mask. And with the density, it's pretty straightforward when it comes to the to what it does, is that if this is made lower, let's click in there and turn it to 50, you'll get less fur. Enter, less fur. Let's press Ctrl Z to go back. We want to have that full fur again because it looks better having full fur. And you have the density mask you can also adjust. Uh, your viewport amount. If your viewport isn't, um, your graphics card isn't as strong, in order to avoid lag, you can reduce the appearance of the fur in the viewport, which helps. The seed, once again, the seed in Blender, that gives us variation in terms of how the, the fur lays. So right now it's at zero. Let's bump it up to, let's say five, enter. And do not crash. There we go. It, it slightly changes the way the fur lays on the cube. It's got a lot more options to it. Uh, the hair curves, noise. can change the distance, the shape, the scale, so on and so forth. Um, as you go down further, you have a lot more options to work with. Now, I don't know why, but usually when you have an arrow pointing towards uh, uh, a feature, it gives you a pop-up menu or a drop-down menu but when I click on this nothing seems to happen I don't know why that is but all your settings that you would want to use to affect the way your their fur looks they're all right here that's all you really need now let's test this thing let's test it and see what happens if we import uh, a model into blender from somewhere else I'm going to close this out click on new general don't save I want to see if it's going to apply the same, uh, have the same ability to apply the fur to a model. Delete that. Now, I've already downloaded the model myself from the last tutorial, which was the fox, uh, the fox that I used in the knitting tutorial, which is also a cool uh, add-on. But let's, I'm going to left click in here, and then right click, copy, minimize that, then go to file, then import. Wave front object because it's an OBJ uh, file. Left click on that. Left click, Control V to paste the address there. Enter. Click on the Fox OBJ, import wave. There we go. We have our Fox here. So let's see if this if it works on models that have not been made inside the Blender. Let me left click on that and scroll down to Fluffy Maker. And let's click on a different preset. Let's click on that one in the middle. And click on Apply Preset. Give it a few minutes to see what's going to happen. Hopefully it works. Okay, okay, it's starting to process. Oh, okay, it's somewhat, oh yeah, it does work. 
Okay, that's not bad. Uh, the reason why this is so small is because this has a lot of polygons on it. So that's another key thing you have to keep in mind. If you create uh, a model, clothing, an animal, whatever, if you have a lot of polygons on it, the fur comes out really small like this, which is if, that, if that's what you prefer, that's fine. But if you want that free, full uh, flowing fur that we had on the cube, the less polygons, the better. Yeah, and that's today's Blender Quick Tip. Let's see how this looks in the viewport. Can't really see much. Maybe it's the lighting. But yeah, it'll it'll apply the fur and that texture to our model here. And that's today's Blender Quick Tip, the Fluffy Maker add-on. And I hope this was helpful for those of you who have watched all the way to the end. And, you know, do download the add-on yourself and try it out and see how it works for you. It makes the fur creation a whole lot easier. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.